It was months ago that we first heard about there being a plug-in ecosystem for Copilot. And while that has evolved for the top tier product Copilot for Microsoft 365 into a range of different options, including low code creation through Copilot Studio, plugins now also arrived for the free tier Copilot, previously Bing Chat, late last year. In this video, we're going to take a look at Copilot plugins. How do you get access to them? What do they do? And if you're using these tools in the context of your business, why you might want to be really careful or even completely avoid them as they stand right now. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guide for small business leaders on adopting AI. I help businesses around the world get more from technology. And if you're interested in working with me or getting a copy of my book, there's more information and links in the video description. One of the really confusing things about everything AI at Microsoft being called Copilot is it can be really difficult to be specific about what technology you're actually talking about in any particular context. If you have a Copilot for Microsoft 365 license assigned, then you will have already been able to see a plugins option in Microsoft 365 chat through certain interfaces like Teams. But these plugins are different to the ones I'm highlighting in this video. These are the plugin options delivered within your work tenant. To access the Copilot plugins, you can use either the Bing interface or copilot.microsoft.com but you need to log in with a personal account or Microsoft account rather than the work or school account or Entra ID. Once you've logged in, you gain access to a plugins option on the top right of the screen. And as of recording this video, you get access to six plugins via the copilot.microsoft.com interface, but only five plugins if you choose to use Bing. Why the difference? Because Microsoft seems to want to make explaining these products as complicated as it possibly can. Seriously, at this point, I have no better explanation. Microsoft, if you're listening, we don't need 10 different ways to do the same thing or with slightly different options. Please make this simpler. So for the sake of completeness, we'll refer to the interface at copilot.microsoft.com, which is branded Copilot rather than Bing for the remainder of this video. You can select up to three plugins to use at any given time. And you can select from Instacart to ask about recipes or discover ingredients to buy, Kayak for searching flights, hotels, and rental cars, Klarna for price comparison, Open Table for restaurant reservations, Shop, which appears to be a property of Shopify for shopping, and a service called Suno that allows you to create an AI-generated song. The final option is Search, which is enabled by default. And if you turn it off, you get essentially Bing Chat working in a ChatGPT pre-web browsing kind of mode, where it relies solely on the data it's trained on. I'm sure there will be people at the New York Times who will be really interested in this new capability, but me not so much. Now, I imagine that it would be possible to turn on a plugin but turn off search, so to solely rely upon the information returned by the plugin as grounding data, but this option is not possible. To use plugins, you must have search turned on. As always, all of the examples that you're seeing in this video are recorded using a demo account, so you're not seeing anyone's private data here. First, I'm gonna turn on Instacart and ask Copilot to suggest recipes that feature poblano peppers and quinoa. A quinoa stuffed poblano is a go-to meal in my house but let's see if they come up with something better that might enjoy wife and toddler approval. And as you can see, Bing comes up with four recipes. I have to note that it took me three attempts at this to have Bing even consider using the Instacart plugin I'd turned on as part of this response. It was really consistent in giving me these recipes, but didn't consistently include Instacart in its request. But even when it does, I'm not sure what value Instacart offers other than shopping list links for just one recipe, which isn't in the list that Bing provides on its own. But you can follow up by asking Copilot to create an Instacart shopping list for a particular recipe you're looking at from the options provided. It creates the shopping list, but not particularly accurately. If you're looking to have every ingredient delivered, you're going to have to go through this and check. Is this plugin useful? In my opinion, no. It's far harder to manually check the Instacart list Copilot creates against the recipe than it is just to open up the recipe and add the items you need to your favoured shopping app. 
It's also important to note that at least one of the recipes Copilot suggested had a quick link embedded to buy the necessary ingredients, this time from Walmart. And so Copilot's plugin was providing a tool to subvert a revenue stream this creator had embedded in their site. I asked Copilot to create a shopping list from that recipe and it did so less accurately than the publisher provided link. And Copilot didn't say, hey, just want to let you know the creator on this recipe offers a shopping solution on their site you could check out. If Microsoft wants to overcome its AI related legal difficulties and convince creators and publishers who are up in arms about AI of its merits, then low hanging fruit like directing us to the creator's own shopping link is at least an option that must be picked. Providing a roadmap for this cannot be beyond the geniuses who are bringing us this technology. Next, let's try Kayak. I'm in Cincinnati in Ohio, but I'm originally from London in England, and I know British Airways just started up a direct flight last year between the two cities. I'm going to see if Kayak can help me get the best deal on using that service this year to go visit family. So first, after turning on the Kayak plugin, I'm using the prompt, find me flights from Cincinnati, Ohio to London, England. I want a direct flight, I need to stay around two weeks, my dates are flexible throughout 2024, and I want the best value fare. Based on the initial response, it seems the concept of trying different date or duration combinations in order to find the best fare is beyond what it can do. Though I know for many travellers with flexibility this is a priority, and there are services that can provide a more matrix type of response in order to provide this information. And then clicking into one of the links, it's clear that my preference for non-stop has only been honoured one way. So let's see if that can improve. The second time around, the first fare found was indeed non-stop both ways, but it's still locked into a fixed 14 day trip, which may or may not be the best deal. However, I do think that the non-stop flight is only offered on select days, so it may well be the best option given my preferences. Overall, I think this is far more a useful tool than the Instacart plugin, but it's still a long way from that utopian vision that's been communicated by Microsoft of Copilot being an assistant that helps you from one end of the day to the other other without having to worry about it too much. Overall, did this save me very much time versus just going to my preferred book site and searching? Probably not. Before we jump into a demo of our last plugin, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a thumbs up to help it get in front of more people who are interested in this type of content. And if you want to see more like this, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks. I'm not going to run through each of these, but I'm going to focus this last demo on Suno. You've heard of AI-generated images or video? How about AI-generated music? Suno is a plugin that will take a short prompt description of a piece of music you want to create, uh, and an AI-generated song to fit the bill will be created. So let's see, I'm going to start with the prompt, create a song to act as a theme for my YouTube channel, Bright Ideas Agency, where I provide technology information and advice to those involved with smaller businesses. It should be upbeat and professional. It takes the prompt, gives you a little information, and has you wait for a little while for the short track to appear. Now I'm not going to play the track here as I have no idea how YouTube will deal with AI generated music now or in the future. And I don't think as this is created by a third party that it's covered by Microsoft's copyright commitment. I also have no idea what practical use a really short song like this really has other than being a party piece. But let me know down in the comments if you found some useful practical purpose for this type of content. So is Suno useful? Well, it does what it says on the tin rather more emphatically than either the Instacart or Kayak plugin, but I'm just not sure it has the same level of utility. Play with it yourself. And ultimately, the idea of playing with these tools for amusement rather than some serious purpose comes into focus. One of the reasons I recommend Bing Chat or Copilot for those with Enter IDs is that you immediately get Microsoft's commercial data protection baked in. This means you can confidently use the service with your private information and work data without worrying about how Microsoft might use that data or being concerned that it might be used to train AI models in the future. The first step of this demo was to log in with a Microsoft account. And while this turns on plugins, it also turns off commercial data protection, meaning that Microsoft's privacy terms give them a lot more flexibility to use the data you share with it. 
Additionally, you should note that each of the individual plugins also had links to their company's own privacy policies, meaning that for each separate plugin, you need to be worried not just about what rights Microsoft has to use your data, but what rights the provider of that plugin has too. Would I be overly worried about this in most cases where I might use this type of plugin? No, but I would be worried about forgetting to switch back into the protected mode when getting back to more serious work if that is something I was generally using Bing Chat or Copilot for. Will you be using plugins? What do you think of these options? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. I hope this video was useful to you. Until the next one, bye bye.